And we are through. This is the 1910 Dayton Model 270 antique ceiling fan motor that I just restored. Uh, so what I did is I completely stripped it down to bare cast iron, took everything apart, thoroughly cleaned everything, primed it and coated it with, this is a Rust-Oleum Appliance Epoxy uh, Black Epoxy Paint, so it's pretty tough. Uh, you can see the, the stator is uh, connected to the terminal nuts up here. One of these is the neutral and one of them goes down to the speed coil and the switch. And the switch you can see is a 3D printed replica of an original snap switch. The original one was broken. So that's a modern switch within a 3D printed housing with also a 3D printed um, switch handle on the end of it. So just something I quickly uh, dimensioned and designed there. Really a beautiful uh, bottom cover, just a beautiful fan all together and just an absolute beast. It is 68 pounds just for the motor. That is about a good 12 pounds over an Emerson long nose or round nose. And this is a 60 inch fan. And when I test it here in a second, you're gonna see the amp draw is uh, certainly befitting that of a 60 inch fan. So without further ado, let's kick it off on high. Starts up uh, very quickly. Quite a bit of motor noise on this one. Um, the bearing isn't too loud. I think with blades on it, I'm not really going to notice it too badly. And I'll be running uh, 30 weight oil in this one. So, on high speed, it's pulling 3.2 amps. Let's drop it to medium. Oh. All right, medium. 2.85 amps. And low. Two point four nine. So <laughs> this fan is pulling more power on low than an Emerson long nose is on high. So not exactly an efficient fan motor, but you have to keep in mind it's going to be a sixty-inch fan, so it's going to be really putting some power out. And. Um, Really happy with how well this restoration turned out. This is a very uh, different fan that I'm used to working on. All the parts in it, even for an antique, are huge. The bearing is 60 millimeters across, and I think the ID was 34. has a huge shaft on it. Um, the way the rotor is designed, it has, has like an upper, low, uh, upper oil cup and a lower oil cup, and bi-directional grooves that carry oil between them instead of a traditional oil return. So just uh, some very unique design elements on it, and the way it's built. Let's go ahead and coast it down. Yeah, so you hear a little bit of bearing noise in there. It's not running very much oil, and the reason for that is, you know, I'll be flipping this thing upside down to store it. Um, until it's ready to hang, so I don't want a big mess on my hands. But my hope is that when it's installed with blades, um, it's not really going to be that big of a deal. You're, you're not really going to hear it. And this fan is not go going to be going in a bedroom. It's actually going to be going on a large um, 16 by 16 covered patio. So it'll be well out of the elements. And I took extra care to uh, insulate everything and, and seal everything against moisture but it's not gonna have any, any moisture on it, just uh, humidity. So, again, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully sometime this year I'll have my patio finished and we can get this thing installed, get some blades made for it, and it's gonna be a pretty neat thing considering it was discovered at the bottom of a grain silo in Kansas. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching.